Yeah, even with a dew point of 50, probably we'll see all the rain stay well to your south. Checking out the radar, I can see there's not much out there. And looking at some case studies here for some of these cities, including around D.C. and Baltimore and Richmond, we really need that rain. Look at the deficit. This is going back to January 1 of 2001. But the right side there, the composite deficit, roughly a foot in D.C., more than a foot actually here, and even around Richmond, 14.3 inches and counting. And again, this year has been very, very meager, five and a half, not even five and a half inches in D.C. Let's come back, check out the radar one more time. You can see there's some cloud cover, maybe a flurry up on Mount Washington. Otherwise, if you're lucky, you may get a sprinkle in western New York out there, actually western Adirondack Park area on that warm front. But otherwise, the radar stays quiet and no rain today, but again, the opportunity will be increasing as we get into the weekend. Sorry about that. 49 Boston, 57 in D.C. on our way to 65. Now to check out elsewhere, here's Kelly. All right, we'll talk about Minneapolis and St. Paul where you have cloudy skies, cool temperatures out there, and yes, we have the threat for rain too. On and off throughout the day today. Could be heavy at times. And then we clear out for the weekend. We're actually looking at a pretty decent weekend here in Minneapolis and St. Paul and warmer temperatures as well. That's something to look forward to. But in Duluth, Minnesota, boy, was it a soggy one for you yesterday. Snowy for a time as well. We set a new rainfall record for the date, 1.32 in the bucket and some of that in the form of snow, nearly an inch and a half. Well, we're still calling for some wet weather up and down the state of Minnesota, over towards Wisconsin, and eventually heading towards Detroit later on this evening, maybe just in time for your evening commute. We've seen some heavy rain across the UP of Michigan, stretching into southeastern parts of Minnesota and in the state of Iowa too, up and down Interstate 35. More wet weather coming in from the west, affecting Des Moines eventually. Omaha, it looks like you're catching a little bit of a break right now. Line of rain, very light rain moving across eastern Kansas, heading towards Kansas City. We'll have to watch this area very carefully as there is the chance for some strong to severe storms as that cold front continues to move toward the east, affecting Chicago later tonight into tomorrow. And there's the wet weather extending on into Michigan for tomorrow as well. 58 Chicago now on our way to the 70s near 80 in St. Louis. Watching out for storms in Kansas City. Minneapolis tomorrow up to 65. Bill? All right, Kelly, let's check out what's happening over California's coast. We have some low cloud cover out there, out towards Burbank, some uh, light fog. Otherwise, I think Southern Cal burns off and has a pretty good day going. Remember now that flow around that low, more of a northerly flow, so that should be a dry direction. Onshore flow, marine air getting well inland all the way up around Spokane, getting some rainfall, even approaching the Treasure Valley, some rain showers out there. Could be a little snow up on uh, the summit of Old Baldy out there around Sun Valley, but otherwise we're talking rain. The Cascades getting some rain, but it is sleeting now. Snoqualmie Pass and a Stampede Pass, so above 3,500 feet it will be an issue for travelers. Watch it on Route 2 out there around Stevens Pass. Otherwise some rainfall in the Great Northwest. We'll take a short break. It should be a pretty good day otherwise in the Southwest. Right now though, you're local on the 8s. Gee, these roses don't look too rosy. <laughs> Sometimes Mother Nature needs a little help. Like when Raymond's constipated. Marie. I give him Phillips. It works like nature intended, gentle and stimulant free, unlike other overnight laxatives that contain stimulants, which can cause discomfort and cramps. Phillips helps his body work more naturally to relieve constipation so comfortably, he's his usual rosy self. Not like these flowers. Sometimes Mother Nature needs a little help. <laughs> Phillips, the comfortable way. You got something to kill lawn weeds? Dandelions, clover? Cream for lawns? Great. I use preen in my garden. How about crabgrass preventer? Really? You know, I also need a good, long-lasting fertilizer. Preen for lawns does all of it? One application? So I don't have to buy a whole bunch of different... <laughs> wow, you sure sold me. New preen for lawns. And don't forget preen for your garden. Oh, you should have listened to that guy. Preen for lawns and preen for gardens. Use preen to prevent weeds today. Now, from the Weather Channel, here's your local on the 8s. Currently, the temperature is 66 degrees under mostly cloudy skies.
forecast for your area. Expect a chance of rain on Saturday and Sunday. And on Monday, expect mostly cloudy skies. Well, good Thursday morning. You're just in time for the weekly planner, your extended forecast over the next several days. And we begin with a look at our highlights for the upcoming week. And while we're looking at the threat for showers and storms today in the southeast, looks like that threat will continue for the next several days, bringing some rain through the Ohio Valley and the eastern Great Lakes over the course of the next couple of days, winding up in the northeast just in time for the weekend. Of course, this is an area that could use the rain. But then you'll notice as we head into early next week, we'll have a ridge developing here in the east, and that will mean drier weather weather in the northeast. Scattered thunderstorms, a possibility from the Ohio Valley through the Tennessee Valley, and a big trough that will be digging out here in the west, and that will mean cooler temperatures and also the possibility of some unsettled weather too. So let's take you through the maps now and show you Friday's weather. Looking pretty rainy across the Midwest, including Peoria, Kankakee, up towards Indianapolis, and also South Bend and Detroit, looking at some wetter conditions ahead. Looking still pretty dry, though, across New England, including Boston, down the Jersey Shore, until you hit about North Carolina. That's when you hit the rainfall and extending into Georgia and along the Gulf Coast, there will be the chance for some rumbles of thunder as well. Across the west, it's going to be warm and dry in the southwest, including Phoenix, as well as San Diego and Los Angeles. But you head up into the Pacific Northwest, same place today that's getting the clouds and the wet weather. That will be the case tomorrow and on into the weekend as well. So it looks like we'll be needing the umbrellas from Seattle all the way down into the northern parts of California. Even Seattle or even San Francisco could see some late day showers over the course of the weekend. Still staying dry in the southwest though. Scattered thunderstorms in Oklahoma and Kansas and along the eastern seaboard. I know it's the weekend, but we desperately need the rain for our reservoirs and our wells here in New England and down into New Jersey, especially where we have a very severe drought underway. Still some rumbles of thunder possible along the southeast. Of course, the Masters Tournament going on in Augusta, Georgia, and we'll be watching out, uh, listening for the thunder. If we do hear any, of course, people will have to exit the golf grounds here, so we'll have to watch out for that here. Scattered showers around the Ohio Valley, extending back towards Little Rock, where you really don't need the rainfall. And here in the northwest, we continue to find disturbances working their way on through, bringing rain to Seattle, Portland, Northern California, and some snow to the higher elevations of the Cascades and the northern Sierra Nevada. As we head into Monday, still looks wet up and down the eastern seaboard, so keep that in mind for your business travel plans along Interstate 95 or flying into New York City. You may want to check ahead on Monday. Scattered showers here in the northern plains with some snow possible in the Wasatch as well as the Colorado Rocky Mountains. Heading into Tuesday, looks like most of the wet weather clears the northeast coast as that ridge will begin to build, but as the ridge builds, we'll see an onshore flow, and that will mean the possibility of some scattered showers from Virginia Beach on south to Miami. Across the middle of the country, still some scattered showers and some thunder shower activity, including Des Moines up toward the Twin Cities and Milwaukee, so keep your umbrellas handy that day. And Wednesday, really looking at a frontal boundary, kind of stalling out here across the middle of the country. Just some isolated pop-up showers and storms and still looking very unsettled out west. Temperatures today and tomorrow will be quite warm across the south. Lots of 60s and 70s. Starting to cool it down just a little bit as that cold front comes through the area. Only 50s around the Great Lakes and then turning cooler across the northeast with the clouds and with the rain in place. But temperatures will be warming up across the deep south. Lots of 80s from South Carolina all the way down to Florida. Lots of Georgia will be in the 80s as well. So we are in for a warm up around Atlanta and Birmingham. Over toward the southwest, it's going to be very warm, 80s and 90s. Around Seattle and Portland, we think that's where it's going to stay a little on the cool side, only in the 40s and 50s for you. Then we'll start to see some really chilly air come down into Montana and Wyoming as we head toward the middle of the week when high temperatures will only be in the 30s and 40s from Glasgow, Montana, over towards Bismarck, North Dakota, Rapid City. We'll see high temperatures only in the upper 30s to near 40 degrees by Wednesday. Still plenty of warmth to see, though, uh, across the northeast, as well as the mid-Atlantic, down to the deep south, where temperatures will be in the 70s and 80s. Now here's Bill. And Kelly, as you know, firefighters continue to ride into dangers. About 200 acres are still burning in Brevard County, Florida. 
and the weather has not been a big help over the last few days with wind out there, and that's allowing flames to quickly spread. There is a slight chance of rain today. Brevard County, by the way, over there a little east of Orlando around Melbourne, but Florida, not the only area, as you'll see here in a minute, that really does need that rain. Check it out, Atlanta, Georgia. The total for the year, actually not too bad. We're running a deficit approaching three inches, but the two-day or the two-year composite deficit, that is an issue in Atlanta. And look at Charlotte. 19.3 inches behind, and that does take its toll on area lakes, including Lake Norman, Greensboro as well, a 15.64 inch deficit for two years running now. Boston, New York City, and Philadelphia, the problem here has been very limited rainfall, and once again, the rainfall here continues to be an issue. The year has only brought 6.33 inches of rain to New York City, and the deficit for the year 2000 now already double that or as much as that in the 15-month uh, deficit now, a foot and a half around New York City. Let's talk about the city now. Again, the deficit going back to about Labor Day has been over a foot. The drought status is now a full-blown emergency. We really need the rain. I know the area lawns need the rain, but you really need the rain up here by the uh, Never Sink and the uh, Papacton and the Ashokan Reservoirs. And so far this week, the rain has been very meager yet again. More on the radar picture in the Northeast and that ugly day unfolding on the Gulf Coast coming up next. This program was brought to you by Schultz Garden Safe. Effective earth-friendly products you can feel comfortable using both indoors and out. Hi, I'm Steve Schultz with a thought for your garden and your family. Everyone wants to grow beautiful flowers, hardy, healthy vegetables, and plants that are nothing short of incredible. But we also need to think about the bigger picture. That's why there's new Schultz Garden Safe, effective, earth-friendly products you can feel comfortable using. Garden Safe products help your plants without harming the environment. Schultz Garden Safe, it's the right thing to do. Get a free gardening CD with specially marked Schultz products. Details in stores. Your skin's a living thing. Feed it something to help it feel healthy. Vaseline Intensive Care with the moisturizers, vitamins, and lipids for healthier, more resilient skin. It's your skin. Do the right thing. Talk about a torture test. I took a leave to my two-day walk for charity. With my bad back, I needed something that wouldn't let me down. My heart went out to some of the other women. Okay? They took something else. A few hours later, they were hurting again. I gave them my Aleve, and they had a fighting chance. Just two Aleve can stop pain all day. It would take eight Tylenol to do that. Aleve. By the end of the walk, people were calling me, hey, Aleve, like it was my name. So thanks, Aleve. Join the Arthritis Foundation and Aleve for the Arthritis Walk this May. It shut down New York City and paralyzed D.C. Do you remember the blizzard of 96? Uh, declare this to be a federal emergency. See why some people will never forget it. On Atmospheres, Sunday night at 8, Eastern and Pacific, only on the Weather Channel. One of the most valuable lessons we can teach our children is the importance of prayer. That's why we're offering you a free copy of Kids Praying for Kids, a 12-month prayer journal written by Franklin Graham, son of Billy Graham. Your child will learn to pray for the needy at home and around the world. Then watch as God answers. For a free copy of Kids Praying for Kids, call Samaritan's Purse at 1-800-766-3030. Call 1-800-766-3030. From the number one trusted name in teaching kids to read. Justin loves computers, so emphasizing the phonics on the CD-ROM is, is perfect for him. We do some of the workbook material with him and then move into the CD-ROM, and he was still learning, but it was a game for him, and he enjoyed that. See an improvement in your child's reading in four weeks of your money back. Call in the next 10 minutes and receive National Geographic's 30 memorable years on 10 CD-ROMs free with your order. Call now, 1-800-ABCDEFG. Now, from the Weather Channel, here's your local on the 8s. Currently in your area, 66 degrees under mostly cloudy skies.
podcast. Expect a chance of rain on Saturday and Sunday. And on Monday, expect mostly cloudy skies. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration just announced this morning that the United States could start feeling the impacts of El Nino as early as midsummer. El Nino refers to above average sea surface temperatures in the central and eastern equatorial Pacific Ocean, and the reds in this animation show the warming of the waters. NOAA scientists cannot say what the strength of the expected El Nino might be, but did say that April and May are the best months to provide clues to it. Depending on El Nino's intensity, impacts could range between fewer Atlantic hurricanes and a drier than normal monsoon season for the southwest to more nor'easters next winter up the coast. All right, let's see how it all plays out. Again, this is the early signs of it, though, so we'll see how this is uh, going to be an issue down the road. And unfortunately, another consequence could be some drought conditions in areas that don't necessarily need them, namely up the coast. But again, we do see the rainfall and El Nino tends to bring a fair amount of rain towards the southern latitudes here. So this is uh, maybe an early sign. I don't know. But we have a couple of upper lows, one spinning off of Beaumont, Texas, another one approaching Pensacola, Florida. The net of it is another rainy day down here. We had an iffy day Monday, a washout Tuesday. Wednesday got better. Now we're back in the cloud cover and waiting on rain. So anybody from Panama City westward all the way out there to, uh, say, Dauphin Island, You'll be under the gun later on today. Well, here's a big setup. We have another rainmaker, a fairly decent rain, too, curling from eastern Kansas up towards the Badgerland today. We've had some heavy rain up there as well. As Kelly mentioned, I think Duluth, Minnesota's had well over an inch. Take it down to the Gulf Coast. We'll start it off by looking at the rain here on our frontal zone, which is uh, stationary. Big surprise, huh? The flow upstairs running out of the southwest, and there's nothing to kick it this way or that way. If anything, it may nudge northbound later on today. So far, so good out there at Augusta. The good news is our greens are softening up a little bit, but there will be some drying going on today. And we may see some brightening skies. It's pretty darn ugly over there now, but the rainfall that did occur was primarily late yesterday. And this is our 24-hour rain, so anywhere from Myrtle Beach down to about Lake City, Florida, and out there in the Georgia Golden Isle, some areas had locally some pretty heavy rain on the order of an inch or two. Again, we're a little optimistic, guardedly optimistic, that things may brighten a little bit at Augusta as the influence of the high is being felt. What started out as a pretty gloomy day in Florence and Charlotte, North Carolina, now brightening considerably. And that high with that northeast wind pulling in some drier air should brighten skies within the hour in Columbia, South Carolina. Augusta, we'll have to wait and see on that. Still a few hours out, but it may brighten up, and hopefully it'll stay rain-free. As you can see, we have some rain out there south of Atlanta, down on 75 between Atlanta and Macon. Also in eastern Alabama there to the south and east of Birmingham, so uh, Sylacauga, Alexander City, near Phoenix City, getting some rain. There's that big slug of rain approaching the Panhandle beaches. Lightning strikes galore out there. Mariners take note of that. Severe threat today, nothing too bad, but watching Kentucky down towards Georgia and Florida. Then in a separate case, an approaching frontal zone with a very vigorous upper disturbance may trigger rough weather. So Kansas City down through Chanute, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Wichita, be on your guard later on today. To the upper Midwest we go. We have a good day going in Chicago, a lovely day in Detroit. Cleveland area looks good. Then you get into the downright nasty day going around the Twin Cities. Rainmaker on our frontal zone. The rain's going to be with you all day, I think, in Minneapolis. The rain already getting steady. It will be heavy for quite a while into the mid-afternoon. Even some rumbles of thunder, a possibility there from the Wisconsin Dells approaching Ashland later on today. Flood watches up around Greater Duluth. We mentioned already over an inch of rain. And likewise in nearby Ashland and Rhinelander, Wisconsin. 
To the northeast, we can't buy a cloud, let alone a raindrop. Boston, Providence, another sunny day, another good day for the cliff walk down there in Newport. And maybe uh, getting your house in order out there in the Jersey Shore. A lovely day. Light onshore flow, though, but otherwise not too bad off. A couple of sprinkles in the Adirondacks, maybe a flake on Mount Washington. That's about it. Cloud cover coming ashore to the west, and with that, we are getting some reports of rain. But the rain out there, I want to mention, generally on the light side and fairly scattered. Now to check our forecast, here's Kelly. All right, we'll continue to monitor the situation here in the middle of the country. As Bill mentioned, there could be some nasty storms out there around Kansas City, eastern Kansas, stretching down towards Oklahoma City. So stay with us here at the Weather Channel. We'll keep you posted on the situation. Still looking at the threat anyway for some scattered showers and thunder shower activity here in the southeast, especially northern Florida and southern Georgia. The rain heads your way into Detroit just in time for your Friday morning. Now here's Ashley Russo. of prevention, springtime walks, and shin pain. When the sun is shining and the flowers are blooming, there's no doubt about it. You'll want to spend more time in the great outdoors. But don't overdo it at first, or you could wind up with a common painful complaint, shin splints. When you begin your walking program this spring, increasing your distance, duration, or speed too quickly can lead to injury and pain. If you notice a soreness in your shins after a week or so of walking, you can prevent further problems if you begin at a lower intensity and build gradually. Ice your shins after walking. Take an anti-inflammatory medication to reduce swelling and pain. And stretch your calves and shins before and after workouts. If you develop pain that is persistent or severe, see your doctor. But keep your progress slow and steady, and you should be able to enjoy your walks all season long. For Prevention Magazine, I'm Ashley Russo. This program was brought to you by Celebrex. Talk to your doctor about Celebrex. Celebrate, celebrate. Ask your doctor if Celebrex is right for you. best way to relieve dry eyes, your own natural tears. They lubricate, protect, and hold in moisture. Visine tears do the same thing. They lubricate, protect, and hold in moisture. So how can your eyes tell the difference between their own natural tears and ours? They can't. So get Visine tears in and get the dry out naturally. Can I give my dog a perm? Are cats smarter than dolphins? Look at those teeth. Should I get in braces? What's with all the wiggling? What's the best flea and tick treatment? Now that I can answer. Frontline Plus. It's the longest lasting, most complete flea protection you can get. And it kills the tick that may transmit Lyme disease. Plus three others. It's the best. Ask your veterinarian about Frontline Plus. For dogs and cats, Frontline is the veterinarian's number one choice. Is it okay for Rudy here to eat bean dip? Have you gotten yourself into too much credit card debt? You may be able to point and click your way out with a second mortgage from Ditech.com. Whether you have equity or no equity, Ditech has a second mortgage with a no closing cost option that may help lower your monthly payments. Why pay minimum monthly payments when you can pay off your high interest debt with a second mortgage from Ditech.com? For fast, friendly service, apply online or call us at 1-800-71-FIX now. It shut down New York City and paralyzed D.C. Do you remember the blizzard of 96? Uh, declare this to be a federal emergency. See why some people will never forget it. On Atmospheres, Sunday night at 8, Eastern and Pacific, only on the Weather Channel. Now, from the Weather Channel, here's your local on the 8s. Currently, the temperature is 66 degrees under mostly cloudy skies.
forecast for your area. extended forecast. You're watching the Weather Channel. Live by it. Heavy rain yet again today moving through Wisconsin and upper Michigan this morning and some winter weather is falling east of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Be on your guard in Kansas City today. Strong to severe storms are possible through the evening. Stay tuned for the latest updates next in this edition of Weather Center. And hello again. Welcome to Weather Center on a Thursday. Kind of soggy out there in the upper Midwest and now the Gulf Coast. I'm Bill Keneally. And I'm Kelly Cass. Thanks for joining us. We could use some soggy weather in the mm -hmm. Northeast, but maybe over the weekend we'll get some. Try to ward off the sogginess, though, in Augusta, Georgia for a few days, but I think oh. that's wishful thinking. We're doing the anti-rain dance around yeah. Augusta, Georgia. We don't want you don't want to see it. No, you don't want to see that. Let's go ahead and start off with Atlanta this morning where you had some cloud cover, temperatures in the 60s, so some pretty mild temperatures. I don't think any furnaces turned on overnight last night. Showers and thunderstorms, yes, they're a possibility, a better chance than yesterday when we saw that sunshine and temperatures in the 70s. Hopefully you're able to get out and enjoy that because our chances for rain increasing today through the weekend. Let's go ahead and take a look at why this is all happening. We have a stationary front draped along the northern Florida, southern Georgia coastline here. And we're also dealing with some moisture lurking out there over the Gulf waters. As Bill talked about, there have been some lightning strikes with that too. So mariners beware of that. Just off the coast of Biloxi, plenty of cloud cover, kind of eroding away a little bit across South Carolina, where earlier this morning we did have some rain showers in the upstate of South Carolina, but that is not the case now. Rain showers are popping now south of Atlanta, well south of Atlanta down towards Macon, also around Montgomery, Alabama. We've had some rain showers and there's the heavier rain that's approaching the panhandle of Florida right now, especially just offshore Pens Pensacola, Florida, heading over towards the coastal waters of Alabama. That's where we're dealing with some heavier rains. Northern Florida, north of Gainesville, over towards Jacksonville, some heavier rain now being detected along Interstate 95. A couple of stray showers out there in South Florida, but nothing much out there. In fact, most of that should be dying down. The best chance for any measurable rain will be here in parts of Alabama, southern Georgia, and the panhandle of Florida. While the winds are picking up, it's an onshore wind across Virginia and the Carolinas. Winds are gusting to 23 in Atlanta. It's a strong southerly wind in Texas and Oklahoma, where temperatures are already well into the 60s. Even 70 at this hour in Dallas, 64 in Atlanta on our way to 68, where again we do have the chance for rain, and that also includes Augusta, Georgia, where the Masters Tournament is going on, of course. Temperatures will be in the low 70s with an easterly wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. We keep that chance for rain around for tomorrow as well, so keep posted and keep an eye on that lightning detection as well. Of course, with any lightning and heavy rain, they'll have to suspend play. Otherwise, look for storms tomorrow. Memphis down towards New Orleans. Let's head up the coast now with Bill. Okay, Kelly, here's the other side of the coin, if you will. Very dry conditions up the coast, including all the area reservoirs that catch that water and hold it for the New York City region. And again, the supply on average running at about 60%. Typically, you're running 96%. You've had usually in latter March and early April spring runoff, but uh, not this year. And look at the big ones, Papacton, the Ashokan, the Never Sink. These are some of the bigger guys. They're running about 50% of capacity. The Croton system down around Westchester actually in better shape. Well, the high is holding sway. Yet again, that high has with it dry air. And again, it's a lovely day, don't get me wrong, from Casco Bay there by Portland, Maine, all the way down to the Chesapeake, a really nice day. Dew points are very low. And again, the spread there between the actual air temperature and the dew point will determine your relative humidity values. And they're not too bad off, running at about 50%. But again, you need the higher dew point at the surface to induce some rain chances, and we're not getting that today. We have a couple of sprinkles coming in around Tupper Lake and Saranac Lake. Otherwise, 
flake or two up on the rock pile known as Mount Washington. But if you're not hiking the presidentials, you're not going to see any snow otherwise. Anywhere from Laconia, New Hampshire, down to Chatham, Mass, all the way down the Jersey Shore, and out towards Pittsburgh, a lovely day. Pittsburgh already now running in the 60s. And again, southeast wind continues to keep it dry in all areas. Quick check in the numbers, and we'll get our numbers out there. Then we'll get our forecast 60 already in Philadelphia on our way to a very pleasant 66 in the city of brotherly love. Now to check on elsewhere, here's Kelly. We've been looking at some wet weather here in Minnesota, Duluth. We had 1.32 yesterday, and that is a new record for the date. Some of that in the form of snow, nearly an inch and a half. But uh, that snow is long gone. The rain has taken over across Minnesota, stretching through Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan. We've had a little bit of wintry weather out there, especially in the eastern part of the UP across extreme northern Michigan. But even here, everything's going over to rain. Looking at some rain across Iowa, affecting Interstate 35 as you head northward toward Mason City. Fort Dodge still getting wet and more rain coming in from the west. That'll be affecting us in Des Moines within the hour, we think. Another batch of rain, very light rain working its way across eastern Kansas, headed toward Kansas City. This is just light rain for now, but this is an area we'll need to watch very carefully for the possibility of some strong thunderstorms later on this afternoon and this evening as that cold front continues to slide toward the east, bringing rain to Wisconsin and eventually toward the Motor City on your Friday morning. Temperature in Chicago right now, 61 at 66 in St. Louis, on our way to 79. Very warm in Chicago today. Wet in Minneapolis, drier tomorrow, and then cooler temperatures take hold as well. Bill? And Kelly, we'll head out there to the west and talk about the cloud cover exiting around the Denver area. You had a very chilly March, but so far April has been pretty good to you guys. And today, no exception, on our way to about 65 in Denver. L.A. Basin a little fogged in right now, some low cloud cover, kind of murky around San Diego. The arid desert continues to live up to its namesake. And once again, the northwest has onshore flow. And with that, we are getting rain. Spokane, even around Pullman out there by you uh, wazoos out there, Washington State getting rained on. Seattle catching some rain. Snowing in the Cascades, generally above 4,000 feet. Interstate 90 should be okay. And again, later on today, generally some pretty quiet weather. The numbers, 68 already at Vegas, on our way to a hot 93 in the Valley of the Sun. Redness ahead, Captain, and join us. Prepare the clear eyes. It removes redness and as an ingredient to moisturize. Wow. The difference is clear. Clear eyes. Ouch. Stop shaving your legs. Switch to the hair off mitten. It buffs away hair fast and easy. No nicks, no cuts. Leaves your legs silky smooth. A hair off mitten. Sure beats shaving. Watch my dark circles, puffiness, and wrinkles disappear instantly. Sudden Change Under Eye does it. It's guaranteed to give you these results instantly. Sudden Change Under Eye Lift. You got something to kill lawn weeds? Dandelions, clover? Green for lawns? Great. I use preen in my garden. How about crabgrass preventer? Really? You know, I also need a good, long-lasting fertilizer. Preen for lawns does all of it? One application? So I don't have to buy a whole bunch of different... <laughs> wow, you sure sold me. New preen for lawns. And don't forget preen for your garden. Oh, you should have listened to that guy. Preen for lawns and preen for gardens. Use preen to prevent weeds today. Hello? No, I can't save you money on car insurance. You want Geico, not Gecko. Well, that's uncalled for. Geico. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. It's tough not having a car. With immediate claim service, GEICO gets you back on the road fast. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Now, from the Weather Channel, here's your local on the 8s. Currently, the temperature is 66 degrees under mostly cloudy skies.
podcast. Expect a chance of rain on Saturday and Sunday. And on Monday, expect mostly cloudy skies. All right, travelers, you're okay in the corners, namely this one and that one. You're not so okay in this one, nor the upper Midwest and the other corner out there, the great Northwest. Bill Keneally here with you alongside Kelly Cass, and we continue to find rainfall and a lot of it moving into the Twin Cities now. You may see an inch of rain before the day is out. Gulf Coast getting rained on yet again, or about to, if you're out there in Pensacola Beach or Navarra Beach, be on your lookout. And there's your rainfall in the upper Midwest, and some of that rain will slide into western Illinois later on today, but for now, it's like the tale of two cities, Minneapolis and Chicago. An awesome day going in Chicago, about as lousy as you could ask for in the Twin Cities. Check out the airports now. We're basically in pretty good shape here. Some issues, though, in the Midwest and maybe Atlanta later on today, and likewise around New Orleans. So we'll watch the, uh, the yellow plained areas, mainly around, uh, I think it's Moist Sant Airport down there. But otherwise, storms could fire as well. Nothing going yet. Nothing out there in Missouri, nor Kansas, or Oklahoma that's approaching severe. But be on your guard here, travelers on I-35, anywhere from KC and Topeka, right on down 35 in Wichita, and for that matter, into Oak City. And also watching the Gulf Coast in general, although the action here should not be near as severe. Alabama, Georgia, Florida Panhandle, have to watch that area. May hear some uh, pretty nasty crackles of thunder later on today. Start you off now in the upper Midwest and see what's going on here. Rain and lots of it. There's a curl exiting Denver, some rainfall out near La Junta, Colorado. Otherwise, the rain is in the Plain States and the rain fairly light or approaching Des Moines. And again, northwest of Omaha, maybe a rumble of thunder out there approaching Sioux City next hour. Chicago, you're pretty quiet. There is some pretty decent rain, though, going in the Twin Cities area. Kind of pull that map out. You can see that rain already approaching an inch and a half in Duluth, Minnesota. You had a reprieve. Now there's more on the way. Likewise, Badgerland, even in here, some pretty heavy rain from west of Green Bay all the way over to Rhinelander and then that curl in the Twin Cities and that'll be with you I think for another four to six hours at least. Flood watches up around Duluth and also Superior Wisconsin for today. Southward bound we have a lot of rain as well lurking around the uh, Gulfport Biloxi area and also around Tallahassee a couple of showers. So far so good though Augusta right up above the uh, top of the screen there. And it's a little cloudy, but relatively rain-free. Watching Pensacola later on today. The Northeast can't buy a raindrop yet again. Maybe a sprinkle if you're lucky in Saranac Lake. Otherwise, there's the leading edge of the rain in Michigan. And far the west we go, the Northwest catching rain. So take it easy today on the 5. We'll check on the weekend when we come back. This program was brought to you by Chrysler. Drive equals love. your weed whacker? It's in the garage. Do you have a chainsaw? One more? Snowblower? It's in the garage. Even with the industry's first power lift gate, Chrysler Town & Country EX at around 27 grand costs less than Odyssey EX. Where did the pepperoni? No wonder people can't wait to see one. Exclusively from Chrysler, our seven-year, 100,000-mile powertrain pledge, because love is a commitment. Can your nails do this and not break? They can with Nutrinail Maximum Hardener to prevent nail breakage. Nutrinail Maximum Hardener. Heartburn? Yeah. And if you're not hard or chalky? Uh, no. I'm not. You may like soft chews. I'm soft and chewy. Not hard and chalky. Mm. <laughs> Softy. Try fast new Maylock soft chews. Okay, the master is on underway already, and uh, Sam Snead already is teed off, so everybody follows after Sammy 
at a tender, ripe young age of 89. And for Sunday now, the final round right now, looking like this, about 79, a risk of storms out there. And looking at some of the maps I saw this morning, I think maybe a little better chance, say Saturday night and Sunday morning, hopefully getting better by late in the day on Sunday. Parkinson's Unity Walk going on in the park in New York on Sunday. Unfortunately, it looks like rain chance is increasing incrementally. Saturday, some chance of rain, a better chance, I'm afraid, in New York, and for that matter, much of the Northeast on Sunday. Northern California has a cherry blossom festival going on in the Bay Area. Maybe a late day shower as early as Saturday afternoon with a high of 65. All right, here's our rainy pattern. Again, quite a log jam going on. There's nothing to boot it out. Big stubborn high over Bermuda, southwest flow, kind of pulling that moisture out of the Gulf and lifting it northbound. So as we edge into the weekend, I think D.C. standing a better chance of rain on Saturday than, say, Boston. But the rain chances will be increasing as the day goes on, even in Beantown and again around New York. Late day rain, a pretty good bet in the Bay Area. Northbound, a good chance of an all-day rain Saturday. Again, pretty of warm conditions where it's not raining. That sun is amazingly strong in middle April. And as we approach uh, tax day, look at the warmth. 80 degrees at Little Rock, 80 as well, all the way to about Grenada in Mississippi. Closing it out on Sunday again, maybe we'll be betwixt and between. The rain exiting early, then we'll wait, then the arrival of a front, maybe Sunday night and Monday. So maybe Augusta could luck out Sunday afternoon. We'll have to wait and see. The upper Midwest, where it's been so soggy, the Twin Cities area getting a chance to dry out. And again, where it's not cloudy, it will be warm. 70 in Omaha, well in the 70s, even around the Denver area. We'll take a break, talk about Stormwatch after your local on the 8s. Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, serving U.S. Prime Beef for more than 35 years. www.ruthschris.com Shh, want to learn a secret about long distance? Let's compare those prices again. AT&T is seven cents. IDT is just a nickel. Sprint charges 10 cents on weekdays. And MCI charges a quarter, while IDT charges one flat rate all the time. Five cents a minute, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, across the US and to Canada. Switch today and save a few bucks each month. IDT Long Distance. No one does it for less. It shut down New York City and paralyzed D.C. Do you remember the blizzard of 96? Uh, declare this to be a federal emergency. See why some people will never forget it. On Atmospheres, Sunday night at 8, Eastern and Pacific, only on the Weather Channel. From the number one trusted name in teaching kids to read. <laughs> Justin loves computers, so emphasizing the phonics on the CD-ROM is, is perfect for him. He'd do some of the workbook material with him and then move into the CD-ROM, and he was still learning, but it was a game for him, and he enjoyed that. See an improvement in your child's reading in four weeks of your money back. Call in the next 10 minutes and receive National Geographic's 30 memorable years on 10 CD-ROMs free with your order. Call now, 1-800-ABCDEFG. Going to the airport? Hey, Bill, you stayed here too? Yeah, want to share a cab? Deal. All right. Great hotel. Yeah, pricey though. Wasn't that bad. Yeah, if you're a CEO. Why? What did you pay? Here's my bill. <laughs> I didn't pay nearly that. Not even half. You got ripped. Hey, buddy. I can get you a great deal on the Brooklyn Bridge. Save up to 70% on hotels worldwide. Hotels.com. The best prices at the best places. Guaranteed. Now, from the Weather Channel, here's your local on the 8s. Currently, the temperature is 66 degrees under mostly cloudy skies.
forecast for your area. Expect a chance of rain on Saturday and Sunday. And on Monday, expect mostly cloudy skies. Our se uh, severe season has been very quiet thus far, and uh, really today no exception, but it was 37 years ago today, a rather notorious tornado anniversary. Check it out, April 11th. 1965, the Palm Sunday tornadoes touring, tearing through Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio. Many cities hit very hard. Crystal Lake, Illinois coming to mind. Marion, Indiana coming to mind. 255 people died. Look at that, 3,331 were injured. And of those 37 tornadoes, 18 at F4 or greater. And the Fujita scale runs from F0 through F5. Those are very, very serious tornadoes. Now we have some more footage on that fateful day. Most devastating series of tornadoes in many decades rips through six Midwestern states. In the wake of the twisters, there are nearly 250 people dead, with damages mounting to the hundreds of millions of dollars. Iowa, Wisconsin, Arkansas, Indiana, Illinois, and Michigan were all hard hit by the deadly tornadoes as they slashed across the heart of the Midwest. The town of Crystal Lake, northwest of Chicago, was badly damaged within the space of a few seconds. Here, among a population of 8,000, six people died, 50 were badly injured, and authorities estimate the damage at more than $10 million. Many such towns were caught unaware, as one tornado would bypass the populated areas, only to have another hit from a different direction. In Marion, Indiana, the storm there struck four widely separated areas. One block would be untouched, the next block level. There is a mammoth cleanup job ahead for the residents of the six states. And again today, so far so good. We are watching one area though, a system coming out of Colorado later on today could trigger some rough weather. So Kansas City, Tulsa, Wichita, down through Oak City, and even the Red River of North Texas, be on your guard later on. Checking out the water vapor imagery, we have a couple little spins in the atmosphere. Again, you can see one exiting the Texas coast, another one coming ashore in the Florida Panhandle, and there's another one running over the upper Missouri Valley with rain and lots of it there in the Twin Cities. And you can see the cloud cover, meaning business today. You hop over out of the cloud deck, though, you get into a lovely day. Chicago, St. Louis area. We talked about Marion, Indiana getting hit so hard in the tornado 37 years ago. Today, a lovely day in greater Indianapolis, including the Marion area north of town. But we do continue to see rain in the Twin Cities. So Minneapolis, much nastier today than Indianapolis. And the rain has been heavy already, approaching an inch and a half of rain in Duluth, Minnesota. Check out the radar. There's your rainfall north of Milwaukee, heading up there by Sheboygan on the lake shore and Green Bay getting some rain, some heavier rain, maybe a couple of rumbles of thunder in here too in the Dells area of Wisconsin and also around Rochester and uh, Red Wing, Winona running right up along the river there, right into the Twin Cities, some of the rain very heavy. And again, we may see another inch of rain in the Twin Cities between now and early tonight. Looks like an all day rain, low pressure trailing front and ahead of that frontal zone, watching with that warmer, stickier air, Kansas City down through Wichita, as well as in Tulsa and Oak City later on, but nothing going yet. The radar composite, this is looking at yesterday's compilation of rain ending at 8 o'clock this morning. Heaviest of rain, Carolina beaches, North Florida. Augusta had a little rainfall, a little bit out there, softening up those greens a bit. But otherwise, actually it may play to the player's advantage today. The cloud cover in place may be brightening up a little bit later on. And I think the rain, at least for the next few hours, ought to stay away. But again, on that front and ahead of it, we have cloud cover. Look how that high is, though, yielding influence. Skies are brightening now in Columbia, South Carolina. And again, it may take some doing, but optimistically, Augusta right about here may see some brightening before the day is out as that high and that northeast wind dries things out. But again, we continue to have the cloud cover and the very sticky air on the Gulf Coast. 
that may trigger some storms. We'll be watching the Florida Panhandle all the way to Kentucky. Also, as we mentioned, Missouri down to the Red River of North Texas. Checking out the radar now, some rain south of Atlanta. Augusta's okay, some rain in North Florida, and some more rainfall. Pensacola Beach all the way out to Biloxi. Be on your guard where we really need the rain in the northeast, high pressure dominant, and again, the reservoirs running very, very low these days. Unfortunately, no rain in the forecast. This program was brought to you by DirecTV. Movies, music, and exclusive sports from the leader in digital satellite entertainment. Hi, <laughs> <sighs> 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 listen, I'm going to have to reschedule if I could. Okay, but you still want over 130 channels with your local channels, right? Yes, I do, but I got, you know, just... Yeah, only $39.99 a month. Okay. Yeah. Over 130 channels, $39.99 a month. Now a two-room DirecTV system with installation is less than $50. Here's the volume button here. Could you hold that for a second? Thanks. This ordinary-looking bed is the key to a restful night's sleep. Even though it may look like an ordinary mattress, it's more comfortable than you can ever imagine. Introducing the Nautilus Sleep System. Nautilus sleep systems are so comfortable because you actually sleep on air. Nautilus uses a unique interlocking air chamber design to give you all the comfort and support you need for a great night's sleep. In contrast, regular metal coil spring mattresses can cause you to be uncomfortable because they only offer one level of support. An uncomfortable sleeping surface causes pressure points, pressure points that can make you toss and turn all night. Nautilus created this patent-pending air chamber design that absorbs and distributes your weight. It relieves pressure points to help you sleep better and longer. Individual remote controls allow you to increase or decrease the firmness on your side of the bed, so you can have that feather-soft feel and your spouse can have the extra firm support he or she has always needed. For additional comfort, Nautilus added a special NASA-designed foam layer to reduce tossing and turning by as much as 82%. The Nautilus Sleep System comes with two dry clean friendly pillow tops, so you can always sleep on a clean, comfortable mattress. You need to call right now to find out more about this revolutionary new way of sleeping and receive this video absolutely free. Nautilus Sleep Systems come with a 20-year limited warranty. They pass the rigorous Cornell mattress test with over 200,000 impacts. And they stood up to the punishment of a 240-pound six-sided roller for over 140,000 passes. This is the sleep system you've been looking for. Go ahead and try one in your own home with our 99 100% satisfaction guarantee. You can order now with no money down and payments as low as $30 a month. You deserve to get great sleep every night. Call now for a free video and brochure or visit our website at www.greatsleep.com and start getting great sleep tonight. Buy it. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this newspaper. It shut down New York City and paralyzed D.C. Do you remember the blizzard of 96? Uh, I declare this to be a federal emergency. See why some people will never forget it. This Sunday on Atmospheres, backpackers trapped high in the Shenandoah backcountry. A pregnant mother goes into labor miles from the nearest open road. Instead of an ambulance, get dressed for snow. And, and heavy snow brings heavy damage. They had a roof collapse. See how a snowstorm became a fight for survival on Atmospheres. Sunday night at 8, Eastern and Pacific, only on the Weather Channel. Now your local forecast on the Weather Channel. And for weather information on over 70,000 cities, go to weather.com. Currently in your area, 72 degrees under partly cloudy skies.
podcast. Extended forecast. You're watching the Weather Channel. Live by it. It's another nice day in the Northeast, but you could really use the rain. We're keeping a close watch on the development of thunderstorms in the plains today. And golfers and spectators are keeping a close eye on the sky and how the weather could affect play at the Masters this week. Hello and welcome to this edition of Weather Center. I'm Janetta Jones. Thanks for joining us. We're going to start out in the Midwest where we have a chance of some strong thunderstorms later on this afternoon. And we take you to uh, Minneapolis where we see some gray skies. We certainly are going to be talking about the chance for on again, off again showers. And of course, you're going to need the rain gear throughout the day from Minneapolis to St. Paul to even Des Moines, Iowa. And eventually we could see some strong thunderstorms breaking out in parts of the southern and central United States. So uh, as far as these showers uh, break down, do expect the strong thunderstorms to be a problem all the way into, oh, let's say Kansas, not to mention Nebraska, and back towards Missouri, we could see some problems as well. So as we break everything down, here's the way it appears on the surface. We have a cooler air, somewhat cooler, behind this front, and that's running into all of this heat and humidity, complements of the Gulf of Mexico. So a very strong southerly flow. We have soupy air mass here. We have the chance for showers and thunder showers certainly going to be moving on across Minnesota on into Wisconsin. Iowa's been seeing some rain not to mention parts of Missouri and down into Kansas. Just a band of scattered showers going to be affecting you. And you can see how that rain extends on into Wausau, Wisconsin. 61 degrees right now in Chicago. It's about 67 in Kansas City. And look at how warm it is in St. Louis. As I mentioned, it's warm and it's also quite humid. We've got plenty of moisture in place here. But to the north of the front, it's somewhat cooler. 38 in Fargo and 43 in Minneapolis. Believe it or not, that's about average for this time of year. So it's not really that cold, maybe about a degree or two below average. What's happening is we have some warmer than average temperatures out ahead of this thing. Now, as we look at the forecast, it calls for the front to continue to move eastward. As it does so, you're going to see the rain scooting across Wisconsin into Iowa, as well as hanging back towards Kansas City. Now, we advance on into tomorrow morning, and look out if you are in Indianapolis or even Detroit. Also, some problems could give way to rain-slick roadways in parts of southern Illinois, extending on back into St. Louis. So high pressure will eventually move in behind this front. But for now, you got to worry about the rain. No you. As we head a little farther to the south, we'll talk about this particular air mass, and certainly we have uh, this cold front slamming into the warm, moist humidity area, and that's going to prove not so great as the upper airflow dynamics are such that we think severe thunderstorms could pop up along I-35 as well as I-40, not to mention I-70, so be extra careful there. Noticing on the radar, we find uh, scattered showers across parts of Georgia and even Alabama and down into Florida. The possibility of rain is going to be on the increase, actually, as we get into the late afternoon hours. Now, check out what's happening.